WJCT Studios in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm Ray Hollister. I'm Tom Braun. And this is Demobile Tech, tech help worth listening to. Got a question about your computer, smartphone, tablet, or the internet? Give us a call at 1-888-972-9868 or send us an email at questions at demobile.com. This week's episode of the Demobile Tech Podcast is brought to you by A Small Orange, homegrown hosting, a refreshingly different approach to web hosting, on the web at asmallorange.com. And by audible.com. Deemable Tech listeners can get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash deemable. Over 100,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. And from All Florida Insurance Options, an authorized progressive agency helping people shop for insurance at 904-757-3288 or at their office in Highland Square on Dunn Avenue in North Jacksonville. Today on the show, we'll be talking about how to clean your cell phone, how to plug in your computer if your house has older power outlets, and how to fix issues with a network printer. But first, a listener who hates cell phones has to buy one. Let's huh. see if we can help her out with that. Tom, can you read that? Yeah. Brandy writes, hi, tech guys. Hi, Brandy. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't call myself a Luddite, but I chose to go cell-free about four years it? ago. Luddite? I thought it was Luddite. Luddite? Luddite. Luddite? Sean? What's Sean's vote? I say Luddite. Luddite. Well, he says Luddite, but that doesn't mean it's right. Well, We're going to go with Luddite. Yeah, majority rule. I say Luddite. I've always said Luddite. That's because you're a Luddite. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> all right, start over again, because no one has any idea what we're talking about now. All right, uh, Brandy writes, Hi, tech guys. I wouldn't call myself a Luddite, but I chose to go cell-free about four years ago. My last phone was the Nextel Motorola NASCAR <laughs> green screen flip, flip, flip phone. That oh, was wow. forever ago. Now I have come to realize that I need a cell phone for work. Here's the problem. I don't understand what any of the specifications mean. I know what I want in a phone. I just need to learn the language so I can make an educated decision. Please help. Thanks so much. I read that you want as much info as possible. Mm. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Well, I know now that I want an Android. No, you don't. I love my Galaxy Tab. Uh, it's not about personal preference. More, oh, okay. <laughs> more importantly, I need a phone that will sync with my email at work. We yeah. run off uh, Outlook cloud-based email. We also use a system called Village Management Software, which I can access from the web. I work in property management, so a good camera would be helpful, and one that I can sync to my computer easily. And an added perk would be silent mode that is truly silent. None of that vibrating while I'm in a meeting going on. Thank you. Okay. I think that covers it. I appreciate your taking the time to read my question and look forward very much uh, to your response. I am really, truly going there, kicking and screaming. (laughs) I just don't want a dang cell phone. Thanks. Uh, Well, welcome to the 21st century, Brandy. (laughs) Yep. You know what I will say? Go big or go home. Sounds to me, based on everything you described so far, that you definitely need a smartphone. Um, you know, one of those big, flat slabs of plastic that you can touch. Wait, phones that you can touch? Uh, <laughs> Ray, smartphones. You've had a smartphone since, like, 2003. Hello? Actually, about 2002. But uh, for this question, I thought I'd play the role of Brandy, you know, returning to civilization out of four ye- after four years of living in Tibet and uh, searching for her chakra and encountering these newfangled smartphones for the first time. Okay, um, Brandy, I'll try to help you out. Thank you. <laughs> Can you explain to me what a smartphone is and why I need one? You have a terrible girl voice. <laughs> I do. <laughs> All right, Brandy. Uh, I imagine even in Tibet or deepest, darkest St. Augustine, they've heard yeah. of the iPhone. The iPhone is a smartphone, and in fact, it was the first widely popular touch-based smartphone. It's still a good smartphone today. So, looks like this. Yeah, it looks like, well, you can't see it. Well, well you, they could, actually. If they're watching the video. They're watching the video. Yeah. Uh, so an iPhone is a good example of a smartphone. But yeah. in 2013, you know, I definitely think that based on what you're describing, Brandy, that you are, need to look at this as a smartphone. Because, um, and I would define a smartphone as any phone, really, that has... Some touch-based interface can connect to the internet and run apps. And apps are basically, in case you don't know, because you've been in Tibet Mm -hmm. or wherever, uh, (laughs) extra extra programs that you can download for your phone, which do all kinds of things. Okay, I can't do the girl voice anymore, so I'm just going to do it in my voice. All right. Uh, I've seen iPhones, but I don't want to play Scrabble and check Facebook, which is what my friends do with theirs. (laughs) I just need the phone to be able to check email, get on the web, and take pictures. Now she's from the Valley. Apparently. <laughs> Brandy, Sorry, a smartphone Brandy. does all those things and does them really well. You don't have to play what, words with friends or be constantly checking your favorite social networking site to use a smartphone. But something like an iPhone just seems like more than I need. Well, maybe it is. But here's the thing. iPhones may have features you don't ever plan on using, but they are relatively inexpensive and extremely well supported. Yes. I could probably find the 2013 equivalent of your green NASCAR phone made by some obscure company, and it might allow you to check your email, surf the web, and take pictures, but it probably wouldn't do it well. Right. Sooner or later, and probably sooner, you'd have problems with your phone, and then no one would know how to help you fix them because that you would have a phone that no one has ever heard of. 
So should I just get an iPhone? Yes. Now, wait a minute there, Brandy. <laughs> I was just using an iPhone as an example of a smartphone you might have heard of. There are a few different major types of smartphone. There's the iPhone, of course, but there are also Android phones, Windows phones, and Blackberries. Uh, Yep. Blackberries back. And earlier, Brandy. Uh, It's too early to call it us back. Uh, I won't go that far yet. (laughs) All right. right, I mean, you can call it back, but I'm not going to say it's back yet. That was Ray, not Brandy. I'm I'm Ray. (laughs) Are you? Am I speaking speaking (laughs) to Brandy now or Ray? Ray is speaking right now. Okay. Go on. Um... But earlier, Brandy, you said you had a Galaxy Tab, which you liked, and so you wanted an, an Android phone. Oh, that she did say that? Yes. I did, I did say that? <laughs> I said it in the right voice. Oh, yeah, she has a Galaxy Tab. I missed that. Mm-hmm. Uh, now I've lost my place. Um, uh, yes, I did say that. Uh, I completely remember saying that, and I definitely want an Android, not an iPhone. Good. I can't believe those words just came out of my mouth. <laughs> no, no, I lo- you know I love I- uh, Android. Uh, well, that's <laughs> fine. Uh, there's some good Android phones out there, and... The thing you know about Android phones, as far as you know, speaking the language and what you're looking for, is they're more diverse than iPhones. Only yeah. Apple makes iPhones, so they're all quite similar. But Android is actually just a phone operating system, and lots of different companies make phones that run Android. So what do you suggest, Mr. Deemable Tech Guy? <laughs> well, Brandy, you already have a Samsung Galaxy Tab, so how about a Samsung Galaxy S3 or S4? Yes. They're both really good phones, and they feel very sim- They will feel very similar to the Galaxy Tab. Now, the S4 is the newer, more powerful phone, but it's also the more expensive. How much is the S4 running for now? Um, well, I mean, if you sign with, up you know? with a new contract, I want to say it's around 150 Oh, that's not bad. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, that's what got 16, that, 16 but... gigs? Yes. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm not. I'm not. And you're not going to quote him as well because he's just pulling it off the top of his head. <laughs> I really am. I go, go, go to their website. <laughs> um, but it, it's a it's a very nice, powerful phone. It's just uh, it's going to it's going to. I'm not saying it's the most expensive phone. It's just uh, yeah. you, you're going to be able to get an S3 sure. for cheaper. And not the S3 is I I own one. It's quite a good phone. Um. Anyways, whichever one you get, with a little help from your office IT guy, you're going to be able to set up your uh, phone to connect your Outlook email really easily. Um, the camera on the phone is pretty good, although I will be honest and tell you that the iPhone has a better camera. There, I said it. Mm-hmm. And by default, uh, Galaxy S phones offer both vibrate and mute mode. So you can turn off that annoying vibration if you so choose. And actually, the Android system actually allows you to create your own customized silent modes if that isn't enough. So, And then uh, for the um, software you mentioned, you said it was accessible through the web. And as long as that is the case, it should work from your smartphone's browser. Yeah. Um, unless it uses something really weird like Java. Yeah, if it uses Java, then you're going to have a problem. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, thanks so much for your helpful advice. I'll go purchase a Samsung Galaxy S3 or 4 immediately. <coughs> okay. Uh, hi, I'm Mike. Uh, were you able to help Tom, uh, Brandy with her, her problem, Tom? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, let's go on to the next question. I'm never acting like a, a caller again. That was weird. <laughs> um, so I found out that the Samsung Galaxy S4 is running for $199 oh, okay. uh, right now. Uh, but looks like Sprint's going to have it available for $149.99. Oh, so wow. it depends on which carrier you get it at. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I'm an, I'm an Apple fanboy. I've said it before, but the Samsung Galaxy, man, those are, those are nice phones. Are the three phones. and the four, the two wasn't that fantastic, yeah. but the three and the four are definitely, uh, serious iPhone competitors. And have almost caught my attention, but uh, <laughs> I have a wife that is very adamant about she does not want anything but Apple. So okay. yeah, I'm gonna stick with it. Yeah, I like it. So we'll see what comes out next. All right. Well, the number, if you have a question, is one eight 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 nine seven two nine eight six eight, or you can send us an email at questions at deemable dot com. Let's see. We got some more questions, Tom. What do we got next? Uh, Shander writes: I was letting my three year old play with my iPhone when she spit up all over it. Ew. <laughs> I need to get it clean, like really clean, and not just dab it with a lint-free cloth clean. It's a phone. You put it up to your face, and I just know it's crawling with germs now. How can I disinfect my iPhone? You know, um, we, we talk talked about, about this, uh, or you you brought this up. We didn't talk about this, but you brought up, I remember, on the Halloween uh, podcast we did, uh, Ooh, you, you did a story about how, since then. how gross... <laughs> Uh, how gross! Oh, you're right. Yeah, uh, um, smartphones were and how many germs were on the surface. So and ever since then, I've kind of been like, "Yeah, man, how do you clean this?" And uh, I'm thinking spit up. She's not talking about saliva. She's talking about barf, right? I don't have a kid, so I. Uh, well, I mean, when when it, you parents when, when parents say spit up, they're talking about the the barf. <laughs> the barf. <laughs> can you say that we're not on the public radio yet? But can you say barf on public radio? 
vomit throw up you can i would not be very um visual with it though <laughs> keep getting into more descriptions yeah. yeah okay that is pretty gross good good to know for your future public radio career. Yeah, yeah good to know yeah and and shander and you are both correct because the wall street journal recently reported a couple stories studies that showed cell phones are quote veritable reservoirs of pathogens i love that mm, phrase that is a nice that's a nice quote <laughs> um and one of the studies sampled several smartphones, and all the smartphones sampled showed abnormally high numbers of coliforms, which mm. are a bacteria indicating fecal contamination. Can we say that on public radio? Yes, definitely. Fecal Excellent. contamination. <laughs> um, yeah. So. Um, yeah. So you know, but that's. I always see reports like that, Tom. I mean, uh-huh. you know, it's always oh, how much germs are on the the handle of the the shopping cart at the store and then i mean there's and there's fecal contamination everywhere but i can actually co- top that yeah recently several news outlets reported that a thief in uganda contracted the ebola virus after stealing a cell phone from a hospital patient oh come on wow apparently the patient actually had was sick had the phone on him and obviously had the germs on the phone and he he swiped it from the hospital yeah, don't then, swipe things from hospitals. They figured out who ca- they who got the phone. Yeah, I can <laughs> you got Ebola. <laughs> um, well, with that in mind, you'll definitely want to clean your phone. Now, ideally, you should use a lint-free cloth and some alcohol, and that would kill 99% of bacteria, but that's not necessarily that simple. Right, because certain touchscreen smartphones, including the iPhone, and, and I believe the Galaxy as well, um, have an oleophobic coating on them uh, to protect them from smudges and fingerprints. And using cleaners with alcohol will wear down the oleophobic coating on your iPhone and iPad and other devices. Yeah, eventually. Now, there is anecdotal yeah. evidence that indicates an occasional light cleaning with alcohol doesn't seem to have that much ill effect but you use it against the manufacturer's recommendations and at your own risk my anecdotal evidence says you do it five times it's gone really yeah yeah did my wife did it? it my wife did uh, it without asking me was she like scrubbing away no, though no 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 just wipe 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 really just, yeah with a with a glass cleaner you know like classic you know eyeglass cleaner kit oh okay and like she did it four or five times and our coating is gone Hmm. but and most phones can be cleaned with just a small amount of mild soap and a little bit of water you know of course you want to check with your manual for your device to be sure yeah and be sure that the rag is just a little wet you don't want it to be soaking wet and that'll get rid of most of the germs Uh, of course You know, it's not going to kill the germs, but it'll get them off of your phone, which is all that really matters, right? You'll have a phone with hardly any germs on it. Now, if you really want to get that phone clean and you don't mind spending a little money, there are a few specialty cleaners designed specifically for the iPhone and iPad. Uh, Bausch & Lohm makes a travel cleaning kit, which is actually sold through the Apple Store, so it's apparently Apple approved, and it says uh, iPad and iPhone on it. Yeah, you know, I I looked at that, and and Monster Cable makes the Monster Clean Touch, which is also designed for iPad and iPhone. They both run about 20 bucks, and honestly, I think it's one of those things that has snuck through the Apple Store, Mm -hmm. because there are questions immediately in the FAQs for, of, uh, this contains alcohol, and you say not to use alcohol on the iPhone, the iPad... Uh, and they haven't responded to them. So it seems like those are products that may have snuck in. I don't know. I, we'll we'll right. see, but I, I still wouldn't recommend. Personally, I still wouldn't recommend using them on an iPad or an iPhone. Well, you can uh, be sure to, you can always test any cleaner you try before using by dabbing a small amount of it on the corner of your yeah. cell phone screen. It's better to damage a small piece of your screen than the whole thing. So. That's true. Um, and if you're truly obsessed with keeping your touchscreen germ-free and you don't want your braid or damage to finish in any way and you have money to burn, <laughs> uh, you can also try UV Light. The That's right. The BioLight UV cell phone sanitizer claims that it will not only charge your cell phone but destroy 99% of all bacteria in the process by bathing it in UV Light. And it's only forty nine ninety nine. Yeah, that does look pretty cool. Um, or you could just save money and head out to the beach. Really? Yeah, because good old-fashioned sunshine also produces UV rays. Um, now, normally we wouldn't tell people to leave their smartphone out in the sun. Remember, overheating is bad for yeah, electronics. overheating is bad. But if you do want to disinfect it, just leave it out in the sunshine for a few hours. The UV mm-hmm. rays will kill just about anything that's still left on it. Now, some of them, of course, still... It, it won't kill everything, but it kills like 90% of germs. So. Yeah. And plus, you can work on your tan. Exactly. <laughs> Um, And again, as as, uh, Ray mentioned earlier, if you have a smartphone or tablet other than the iPhone or iPad, be sure to uh, follow manufacturing recommendations for cleaning. You can almost always find them in the manual that came with the device. Okay, so to summarize, we're talking use a little bit of soap, 
and a little bit of water to mm-hmm. wash it off. Uh, don't put it too too damp. Or if you want to risk losing your oleophobic coating, use an alcohol based cleaner. But go light. But go light on it. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you know, just use the soap and water a little bit and stick it in the sunshine. That's probably the best way to do it. Okay, cool. All right. What's the number? Uh, I don't remember. What's our number? <laughs> the top our number to call if you it's have a question. It's 1-888-972-9868. Or if you have a question, you can shoot us an email at questions at deemable.com. Or if you're crazy and you got Twitter or Facebook, hit us up at deemable. And it's facebook.com slash deemable. If you haven't liked us or followed us on Twitter, go ahead and do that. Be our friend. All right. Got another question? Yeah. Um, let's see here. Daniel writes, I have moved into an old apartment building downtown, hmm. and I've noticed that it only has two electrical outlets in the whole building that allow three prongs. Ooh. Most of the outlets only allow two prong plugs, and there are no three prong plugs in the bedroom, which I want to set up as my office. Hmm. A lot of my electronics, including my laptop, have three prong plugs. My power strip also has three prong plugs. Is there some kind of three to two prong adapter I can get so I can plug in my power strip? Is it safe to use a three-prong plug on a two-prong outlet? I assume a third prong there prong is there for no reason. A reason I can't talk, <laughs> but I am not an electrician. Thanks. Good question, Daniel. Yeah, this is something that we deal with because we live in a neighborhood called Riverside here in Jacksonville, which mm-hmm. is a very old neighborhood, and uh, it's like that pretty much in almost every every apartment and house in our area. Yep. The third prong on your laptop plug is called the ground, mm-hmm. uh, and any piece of electric equipment that has a metal case should have a ground. Uh, the ground runs directly from the metal in the device to, well, the ground. Oh, there you go. <laughs> the idea is if there's an accidental spark in your laptop, it will run harmlessly into the ground instead of giving you a nasty shock. So if you grabbed the hacksaw and sawed off that third prong and then plugged your laptop into a two-prong outlet, it would still work, right? Yeah, works all the time. I do it. I have done it a uh, countless number of times. Uh, but I recently found out that you would be disabling an important safety feature. Yeah. The ground is there to protect you. The idea is that if there's a fault in one of the devices you've plugged into the outlet, the current will run into the ground instead of electrocuting you, which is, you know, nice. Yeah. Um, now, what about adapters? I know I've seen three to two prong adapters. Is using one a good idea, Ray? A good idea. Well, okay, so those are actually known as cheater plugs because uh, you're cheating the system. Right. <laughs> so... Now, those used to be very popular. Um, when I did a lot of sound, uh, I used to grab them all the time because there's this thing called a ground loop, mm-hmm. which it makes this crazy sound in equipment, and you have to use a cheater plug to fix that. Hmm. Um, but there's other ways you can fix it now, too. But you used to be able to go to Radio Shack, Home Depot, Office Depot, Walmart, anywhere, and pick them up for a couple of bucks. But you might have a problem finding a cheater plug now because they've pretty much stopped making them within the last couple of years. Oh, really? Yeah, the reason is that those adapters were designed around the assumption that the screw in the middle of the outlet is connected to the ground. Mm -hmm. So the current, what you would do is you're supposed to unscrew it and screw it back in once you put the cheater plug in. Right. Uh, So the current from the ground prong runs to the screw. But actually, they discovered a lot of times that screw is not grounded. It's Mm. pretty normal for it not to be, especially on houses that were built a long time ago when the grounding wasn't that big a deal. Mm -hmm. Uh, So your average person who's not an electrician can't tell the difference, which means that they can't tell if the adapter is safe to use or not. Ah, so you could get an adapter for your two-prong outlet and plug your three-prong laptop into it, but you don't know if it's really grounded. Right, and the reason why that they stopped making those is because they got sued. Oh, <laughs> so that... A few people got electrocuted and they got sued, yeah. so it cost more money to keep making them mm-hmm. and the, the liability. So it, it is pretty risky. Okay, so what would you suggest? Well, ideally you should replace the whole outlet or at least get a, a plug that is a GFCI. Okay, and that stands for? Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter. If you've ever been to a hotel and you've seen those outlets in the bathroom or a kitchen, that's where I've always seen them. Yeah. And it has a red and a green button or a red and a black button. Mm-hmm. That's a GFCI, Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter. A GFCI works like a mini circuit breaker. If it detects a power surge, it disconnects the power entirely, hopefully in time to prevent you from being electrocuted. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to reset it by hitting the green button. So should Daniel try to install a GFCI himself? Uh, a GFCI outlet, um, yeah. I would say if you are comfortable doing electricity and you can get it co- 
uh, approved by your coding, right. then sure, it's possible to do, um, but it definitely does require some careful rewiring. Of course, you always want to cut the power before you attempt to do anything like this. I've done it myself and then had an electrician approve it afterwards. Uh, but if you're not familiar doing electrical work, I would not even suggest trying it. Okay. Um, but there is something you can do. Um, there's GFCI adapters. Oh, really? They run about $12, which ironically, the GFCI outlets also run about $12. Yeah. <laughs> the, the biggest part of the cost is the breaker in itself. Mm-hmm. And what you do is you plug that into the wall. Gotcha. And it's just like the, the little cheater plug, except it's bigger, mm-hmm. and you plug a three-prong outlet into it, and it's got the little buttons, same thing. Oh, cool. It just works instead. Now, the problem is that, especially in older homes like, like mm-hmm. ours, uh, the the electricity can kind of vary. Yes. And they'll shut off on they you. They will, uh, yeah, false, that's, uh, false That's what I found false out. Flag. Like the one in our bathroom, it, yeah. it you know, you kind of turn it back on one again. One of my bedrooms, we're trying to plug the uh, vacuum cleaner in it. Yeah. Goes. Yep. So that's true. So, uh, one last thing we should mention on this topic. I'm not an electrician, so I'm not sure why it works this way. Maybe you can speak to this, Ray. But everything I've ever heard indicates that surge protectors don't work well or possibly at all if you don't plug them into a grounded outlet. At, that's right. Yeah, they do not work at all if you don't plug them into a grounded outlet. So you're just or, wasting your time. Or into a GFCI. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and some, some, uh, uh, some ground surge outlets, protectors. Surge protectors. If they have two prong, they actually have GFCIs built into them. Oh, really? They'll have Did little switches. Okay. So you can buy a GFCI surge protector. Okay. Uh, so that it's going to probably yeah. increase the cost of the surge protector by about twelve dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Yeah. And I'm guessing um, now, uh, yeah. And I and I was so bringing up on this topic. To be clear, surge protectors are there to protect your equipment. The right. ground is there to protect you. Exactly. Yeah. That's true. And and it really is a big deal. If you have a device that has that ground on it, it's because it pushes enough power through that line to kill you mm-hmm. or to permanently injure you. So it really is a big deal. And like I said, I'm guilty of it. Mm-hmm. I have numerous cables with the ground broken <laughs> off. And again, the ground is the third one that we're talking about. Yeah. And you know, they work fine. And I haven't died yet. <laughs> Emphasis on yet. So... <laughs> So it is not safe to do. Definitely get a GFCI adapter or have your outlets changed out with GFCI outlets. Ray, how's your life insurance? Uh, I think I'm going to get it fixed. Get it updated. <laughs> yeah. Check it out. I think you should. All right. Okay. The um, number to call if yeah. you have a question is 1-888-972-9868. Or and send us an email at questions at com. That's right. All right, got another question here. Yes. Um, MW writes, MW. I, I have a pair of Toshiba laptops for my kids. Toshiba. They come with, v- Toshiba. V- they come with Vista, but I've installed valid copies of Win 7 Home Premium on them. Mm. Um, recently upgraded our wireless router to one, of, with, to one with two USB ports. I have connected a large networked hard disk on one and an older HP D1300 series printer on the other USB connection so the kids could access a printer and keep off mom's machine okay when i tried to set up the printer on both laptops after the win 7 install one automatically recognized the printer the printer is plugged in through the usb and installed the driver and can access it with no problem the other computer refuses to acknowledge the presence of the printer and i can't get win 7 to connect to it Mm. even though it readily acknowledges the hard disk and i can store retrieve files from the remote hard disk from both toshiba laptops so it is connected to the router Okay. I, I know of no difference in how Win 7 was installed on both machines. I installed them both, and there appear to be no issues with the install process. Ew. I tried deleting all the printers on the recalcitrant machine and plugging and re- reconnecting the printer to the router, and the install disk for the 1300 is not recognized by Win 7 and won't run, and it refused to let me run as XP, etc. Many thanks. Ooh. It's a long one. I love... We, we were going to do this in the lightning round last week, weren't we? Or <laughs> yeah, week before last. we talked to you about that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me see if I get this straight. Let's recap. Uh, MW, which, uh, can we assume that this is a girl just for the sake of... Yes, and she said for she simple pronouns. mom. So oh, Okay, there you go. Cool. Okay, so MW has a pair of identical laptops. Uh, their hardware is exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, upgraded from Windows Vista to Windows 7. Yep. She has a home network running a router that with two wireless USB ports. Mm-hmm. Two USB ports on the router. Yes. Okay, gotcha. They're wi- I'm sorry, it's I like wrote that. Wireless out. USB ports. I've never heard of those. <laughs> it's magic. It's magical USB ports. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so she's hooked up to the router. Uh, hooked up to the router is a portable hard drive 
and an HP D1300 series printer. Yeah. Okay. Both laptops can see the networked hard drive, but only one can see the printer, even though they should be in every single way identical. Mm -hmm. Okay. And attempts to reinstall the printer drivers and to detach and reattach the printers to the network makes no difference. Did I get everything right? Yeah. Knocked okay. out of the park. Um, so what do I win? Yeah. A uh, thousand listening comprehension points. Hey, what can I redeem those for? Um, hey, I've got, uh, let's see, 13 cents in loose change in my pocket. Uh, it's all yours. All right, Tom. So got any thoughts on why one of her identical laptops can't see the network printer? Okay, my first thought is that I think MW is getting a little too hung up on the fact that laptops are supposed to be identical. What do you mean? It, it, are, are we assuming that they are the same model, the same hardware? Yeah, uh, definitely. But it's okay. my experience that two identical computers, and I put identical in quotes, can yeah. have completely different problems. In fact, really? this happens all the time. If you ask the IT guys at my office, um, these help desk guys, they will buy multiple new computers, identical machines from the same company, and they set them up for employees. Okay. And they don't sure. even install Windows in the traditional sense. They install an image of an right. exact copy of a hard drive on every single one of these machines. So they are as exact as in duplicates as possible. Yeah. So you have multiple machines. They're bought from the same manufacturer with the same specs. They have the exact same software on them. And then you give them to the users. And guess how often these identical machines develop unique issues? All the freaking yeah. time. And those even have the same settings, the same mm -hmm. uh, setup. Everything's exactly the same. You yeah. could go from one computer to... This is how we have it at our work. You could go from one computer to the other, and they look work exactly mm -hmm. the same. You have to realize that a computer is an incredibly complicated machine. It's composed of trillions of intricate connections between tiny parts. And these parts are, by the way, manufactured all over the world before they are assembled by Toshiba or Samsung or HP or whoever. True. And it's all too easy for tiny undetectable flaws to be introduced at some point in the process. And that's kind of why I say there's no such thing as identical computers. They may have the same specs. They may look the same, but, you know. Yeah, so uh, I guess don't get hung up too much, uh, MW, on the fact that they're, the laptops are identical. They can easily have different issues. So you really need to concentrate on troubleshooting the problem. Um, the first thing I would do and that anyone is going to tell you is that you should search for the latest drivers for your printer and make sure that those are installed on the problem laptop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go to uh, HP. Do we say HP? Yeah, Yeah, it's an HP. Yeah, go to HP's website and see if you can find the uh, drivers to that model. Now, she did mention that she had tried updating the drivers. I think she said she tried reinstalling. Oh, reinstalling. Okay. Oh, so make sure it's the latest driver. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So what might be the problem uh, if that's not it? MW is probably not going to like to hear this, but I think the printer may be the problem. Really? Why is that? You okay? <laughs> yes. Uh, he's, he's preparing for the moment. <laughs> I was like trying it's, to get it out. It's a big. Coming. It's a big. It's a big thing. <laughs> well, <laughs> this isn't going to be as dramatic as that pause implied. <laughs> so I noticed MW was plugging the printer into the USB port of the router. And MW also said it was an older printer. And that oh. immediately made me think that the HP D1330 was not designed to be a network printer. And okay. I looked it up on Google, and guess what? It's not. Oh, okay. Well, that's why routers have USB ports, right? So you can take a non-network printer and use it as a network one. Sure. And you can do that in theory. But I'm here to tell you, like, it's my personal experience that networking printers that weren't designed specifically to be networked mm. is horrendously unreliable. Like, I have had all kinds of trouble with similar situations. The printers freeze up, they disappear from the network, they're and they're still there, but they stop working. And you never figure out why. The next day, they go back to working hmm. normally. Um, and I just think it has to do with having non-network printers on a network. It just doesn't work well with a printer queue or something like that. I know that right now MW is having a specific problem with just one of her computers, but I think yeah. if she gives it time, I will bet you anything the other computers have sporadic problems with that printer as well. Really? Yeah. And so huh. I would say at the end of the day, I think MW will save herself a lot of time and headaches by going out and dropping a chunk of cash to buy a printer that's intended to be used on a network. Really? Wow. That's just my two cents. You got anything you want to add? No. You know, I've experienced that... Um, I just thought that was a Windows XP thing. <laughs> <laughs> so now knowing at that least, it's at the very least true it's persisted through seven. seven, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. I actually had that experience. Uh, my grandmother-in-law has a Chromebook because mm -hmm. I convinced her to get a Chromebook. <laughs> I actually convinced my in-laws to buy her a Chromebook. And uh, Google needs to sponsor this. Show. I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was really disappointed because I thought that you could just print uh, plug in a printer. And it would work. Mm -hmm. But it turns out that the Chrome OS doesn't have any 
drivers on it at all. Yeah. You have to set it up as a cloud drive or a mm-hmm. cloud printer. Uh, so I got over there and I was like, did you try plugging it in? They're like, no. I'm like, well, let's try that. So plug it in. Nothing. I'm mm-hmm. like, ah, oh, man. But yeah, it's the same thing. Like you have to set it up as a network and it, it it's not worth it uh, a lot of times because mm-hmm. there's a there's a device that you can pay 99 bucks to <laughs> add a network printer and mm-hmm. it works really well. I can't remember the name of it now off the top of my head, um, but it works fantastic. But it's like, Hey, you can pay 99 bucks and get a whole new printer that has network capabilities gotcha. that yeah. you can use with cloud print and with, uh, mm-hmm. AO, or uh, Apple's, uh, iCloud as well. Yeah. So I don't know. That's just one of the things I would say. You're talking about an older printer and I know probably it's something she had sitting around and yeah. it doesn't cost her anything and that's great. But, uh, you know, I, predict these kind of problems are going to continue. I, I've just seen a lot of that where printers can be really unreliable if they're, well, they can be unreliable, period. Yeah. <laughs> we've talked about my hatred for printers. She, he does hate printers. Explore that in depth in the last couple of weeks. But uh, yeah, I've just seen this a lot with them. Um, I'm pretty sure that every printers. time we get a printer question, your answer is similar to the scene from Office Space. <laughs> just take it out with a baseball bat and yes. beat it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Until it plays through my head anyways in my fantasies. <laughs> like, uh, shoot it. <laughs> exactly. Just take it out and shoot it. Um, so yeah, um, so basically what you need to do is check for the latest driver, mm-hmm. see if make sure that you've got the latest driver running on it. Uh completely uninstall and reinstall it and then take it out and shoot it. <laughs> yeah. But hey, we got a lot of people who are more intelligent than we are, uh, more talented than we are and in, in printers specifically. Mm-hmm. So if you're listening to the show and you have an idea to help out MW with our HP D1300 series printer uh, running on the network, let us know. Yeah. Send us an email at questions at dmobile.com. And uh, put, if it's good. Ray and Tom are wrong in the subject line. Yes. Ray and Tom are wrong at, and send it to questions at dmobile.com. <laughs> well, do we have any more questions? You know, I think we are out of questions for today. All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for all your questions and keep them coming. Mm -hmm. What's our toll-free number, Tom? (laughs) 1-888-972-9868. Or you can send us an email at questions at deemable.com. Also, have you subscribed to the show? I I have. You have. Good. Yes, I've enjoyed it. John, have you subscribed to the show? Of course I have. Oh, excellent. Okay. Hey, listener, have you subscribed to the show? (laughs) No, seriously, it, it's really important. Uh, the more subscribers we have, the more the higher up we're listed in iTunes, which means that more people find our show. And so, get help. And get help. So if you haven't subscribed to the show, subscribe to the show. Seriously, it's really important. We really love it. So here's what you do, because you're like, well, how do I subscribe to the show, Ray? I don't know. You go to iTunes, you open it up, and you search for Deemable Tech. It's D-E-E-M-A-B-L-E dot com. It's, two, it's like two words, but it's one, Deemable. Deemable. Tech. And in iTunes and hit subscribe. Or if you use a different podcast app, you can just subscribe to dmbl.co slash pod. <coughs> P-O-D. <laughs> dmbl.co slash pod. Our producer is Sean Birch. I'm Ray Hollister. I'm Tom Braun. And this is Deemable Tech. Thanks for listening. Have a great week. Woo! Djibouti. <laughs> Djibouti. <laughs> Djibouti. Um, <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Djibouti. Djibouti. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> and the Djibouti Tourism Council. <laughs> <laughs> Welcoming you to Djibouti for over 20 years. I just wanted to let you know that when you were saying how to uh, subscribe to it, you said to search for deemabletech.com. <laughs> <laughs> that works, <laughs> <In> too. <iTunes. laughs> Actually, that works he just too. said deemable.com. I was going to correct him. I was like, yeah, ah. it's fine.